Hope Street offer you, give you the opportunity to work in different performance? There's always something to learn because we had always different director that comes with different styles of, of, of making theatre as well. Some of us have just graduated, others haven't been to uni yet or other people graduated years ago. Um, so it's really nice to teach each other things and learn different things. I think I, I needed to do something that develop me as a director but also help me find out what type of work I wanted to do. Tent. Relationship maker. It brought us all together straight away. So we were kind of straight away in the deep end like let's see how you can swim. <laughs> so We created a space in Hope Street that represented um, refugees and asylum seekers. It taught me to make decisions, it taught me how important it is to stick to something and work through it. I've had a long term interest in Francis Bacon, I've seen a lot of his work and just digging into that and beginning to understand him better as an artist. I think art in, in spaces like that is sometimes not everyone can access it and sometimes it seems a little bit distant so to be part of something, to make something for that venue was really really brilliant. And the mask work, that was really good. I had done some street theatre before but going out with a mask is a bit different. Creating, creating mask, well, so also like doing manual things. I worked with Claire Morris from Fallen Angel, she was a really amazing mentor. She was. Uh, more of a dancer choreographer and I think that got me into movement directing quite nicely because all I've known is choreographing. It was just it was just really really good to work with the community groups and working with Rod and working with Fallen Angels they, re they were really the highlight of, of Bacon. But then we jump uh, to, uh, to the last utopian. The last utopian. Do you know what? I don't think I've ever had such a fun experience with a show or project. Something completely new that I never, never done. Um, it was the immersive game. We're talking about political engagement and that's something I'm quite passionate about. And I also quite enjoy making up puzzles and setting puzzles and, and digging, in, digging into the sort of the subject of mechanisms of protest and how that can be effective. Just being in a music in a punk music video for me was the best thing I have ever done in my life. It was just the most fun. Now, this, just the sheer scale of it, like I'd, I've never done anything that big before. I've never done anything where it's like across the city, like you run along on the docks, you run along through L1, and you're being chased by people with masks. It was nice to experience the city and have such a huge project. I think just building the world and the different characters with Adam was amazing. There wasn't a moment like, oh that was my bit, that was my bit. You just felt like we all were part of that world that we created together. I was working with uh, Luke Moore and just working with him, like we really clicked. Very, It was a very memorable uh, experience working with him. The one I, I really like is working at theatre. And yeah, with the Fakir was like, ah oh, yes, we are here. It was great to go with Fakir to the Everyman because that's my home theatre, that's a theatre where I've probably sat in a seat the most and suddenly to be part of it and add my voice to it, that was that was just great, you know. Fakir, the rehearsal process was just amazing. It was so nice to see so much of what happened in the rehearsals then in the play. The Fakir um, was not installation at all, which is very different to all the other ones. Um, so it was movable sets. Each thing becomes another thing, so that everything has a multiple purpose. I really enjoyed the puppetry because I haven't, I hadn't done puppetry before I came either. Um, so actually making the puppets and playing around with different forms of puppetry was really fun. It was a big show. It had to have quick characters and it was quite, you know, epic in the sense of everyone was moving and a lot of different 
changing characters and changing places. But there still needed a through line and there still needed to be a detail in them little moments. And that's something I took quite a pride in and such like an aim to do. For changing landscapes, it was kind of a bit of everything. Um, there was some sourcing of music, working with Alice and Sam, um, quite a bit of original composition and sound design, and um, creating a little installation that people could go and listen to when they weren't experiencing the one-to-ones. We all, we all had the opportunity to do something that was really, really personal to us. The last project, the last project, the one that you come up with by yourself, is so important because it's personal to all of the emerging artists. It was the perfect end to Hope Street. It was so personal and for everybody it was just a real sense of discovery, of self-discovery and we found things in each other and people found things in themselves that they didn't really think of before. And the last one, that, that was great to sort of excavate some of my own history to put into the, the bus tour and talk about that but also to think about how the landscape has changed. The end product that we came out with was really, really honest and all of us as artists need to take from Hope Street like that honesty because from day one, Hope Street is a family. I can't recommend it highly enough to anybody. If you're privileged enough to do this, then you should take it with both hands. It's for anyone as well. It is, and even if you're not good at something, you'll, it, it will help you get better with it. I'm looking to apply for acting jobs, which I wouldn't have done before I came here. Because it's, it's the industry in practice. You can learn whatever you want at university, but you find your feet here at Hope Street because of the way they support you and the opportunities they offer. Mm -hmm.